Hey guys, this is Kai. So now that we've already gone and done the initial setup for our Xcode project using the particle iOS SDK, now we can start invoking functions. So I'll go into that directory that we created in the first video and I'll open up that particle XC workspace that we had. Now, if you've never used Xcode before, I'll go ahead and click the main storyboard, and this is going to give us the, it lets us view all of our displays, like all of our images, our views, essentially it's the views. So in Xcode, it works, uh, you switch windows by switching views. There's like one window and multiple views that you toggle between. And so we'll start with this main view, and this is the only thing that we'll be working with in this video, just to keep things simple. Now I want to go ahead and if it's not open already, you want to click on the top right over here to display a bunch of these tools and you're going to want to click on this third uh, to the right and it's going to let me, at the bottom if I go ahead and search button, it's going to let me get a button. Sorry I don't know Xcode like well enough to give you guys the terminology behind the UI and everything but here's a freaking button. So let's put the button down in the middle of the screen over here, we'll just, who knows, it's doing some auto constraints for us and that's cool. What I want to go ahead and do is rename this button. I can just go ahead and double click it and I should be able to just rename it something like login. So now I have a button but the button doesn't actually do anything. The button isn't connected to anything. Yeah it's in the view and it's in the display but it's not actually uh, programmatically connected to anything. But we can change this by clicking the assistant editor right here at the top. It's going to have these two little marriage ring looking things. So if you click it, it's going to open up two different editors side by side right here on the left hand side. We have, and I'm going to close this out right here, we don't need it. On the left hand side, we're going to have that main storyboard and on the right we have usually the, uh, the file that's connected to the storyboard. So in this instance, we have a viewcontroller.swift file that is going to be um, handling all the code that works with this view over here. So what I want to do is go to my button, I can click the button here, or if I wasn't sure like exactly if I was clicking the button and I had a bunch of stuff, I can view the hierarchy right here. This is the view, the actual whole encapsulation of the view. But inside that view we have this little button and I can click that login button. Now if I go ahead and control drag that login button to my view controller over here, I can create not a connection, I want to actually create an action. I want an action to occur whenever I tap this button. And what I want that action, we'll call it right now login and display devices. That's what I'll call this action. So now whenever this button is pushed, this uh, type of code right here is going to be invoked. So what do we want to happen? Well, we need to log into the cloud first, and we can do this first by going to the particle references, and I went to the iOS SDK reference, and I see right here that we need to log in with a user. So we can do that by copying that, and I'll paste it into the button area right here. Now, it's very important to note that, I don't know when they wrote this, but it was before the updated version of Swift, there is no print line in Swift 2. You just take away that print line, everything is automatically going to be uh, given a print line. So now if we ran this, we would be able to log into um, the particle cloud, but we would be using a username at email for the username, and the password would be just user pass. Uh, that doesn't sound right. So instead what we'll do is go ahead and do my login credentials which is you know whatever probably shouldn't be doing this but I'll guess I'll update everything um, all right so if I put in my credentials um, now I'm going to be logged into the cloud and that's pretty cool but nothing's going to happen I want to actually go ahead and do one more thing and I want to actually list the devices that are connected to my account so I can do that by going here and it tells me get a list of all devices well this sounds terrific I'll just copy all this right here go back into my code and so once we log in after that I will then do all this I don't really need to remember get rid of the print line stuff 
And I could delete that variable because I'm not really looking for a particular type of device within it. I don't really care. So for devices in devices, what I'm going to want to do is just console log that device. So in other words, what I'm saying here is that I want to go through each one of these devices that I get from the cloud and I want to, oh, wrong language, sorry, I'm going to print it. And I want to print that object. So it's going to tell me and display a bunch of information about that object. So if I build it, oops, shit, guys. What did I do? Okay. So if I go ahead and build this project now with Control B to build it and then run it with Control R, that'll give me a simulation of this project that I've already created. And if you remember, all that we really have in our project is a button, and that button's going to log into the particle cloud, and we haven't really given it constraints, so the button's not directly in the center, but it's going to log into the particle cloud with my credentials that I've very foolishly given the internet, and then it's going to pass back uh, each particle device that is listed onto my account. So if I do log in, we're logged in, we see that, and then here we go, we get in copy all this for us to see we get back these objects right here and each one of these is known they're calling it a spark device that's the object that the cloud is going to invoke it in the SDK rather and it's going to give me information about each and every one of these including a type an ID a name and whether it's connected and if it is actually connected um, and I have variables or functions exposed to the cloud then it's actually it's going to list those too so this was the second video and we'll start doing some more cool stuff like we'll actually create a legit login screen and i'll teach you guys how to use constraints and stuff so not everything looks so janky